I think we're all set up and good to go. If the chat could verify that you all can hear me, that you can hear Dark Lorax as well on the call, which I mean, you should be able to. If you guys could just type that in chat, that would be phantasmagoric. <clears throat> Awesome. Okay, fantastic. Everything sounds good. All right. So, uh, what were we talking about in this game? Was this game a little bit different? Same sort of thing? Uh, this game, the opening is sloppier. Um, so, it may just be that. I feel like I always come out of the early game and the early mid game behind for some reason. Like, I feel like I'm always just playing from behind. Yeah. And unless I take like a perfect engagement, I usually don't get kind of back into it. There is a um, uh, very fast Banely Nest and, and faster Evo Chamber. Like this game, we don't see those drones on that third base, which is so important. So definitely it is a an opening where we're not going to have that economic boom, which can obviously pay off huge, especially against this sort of style. Very economic build from our opponent, right? Just the Hellions yep. poking, the Viking clears Overlords, the Liberator will do a little bit of follow-up pressure, but it's all very light into 3cc, double EB then the second and third barracks about as economic as they come very very strong build from our opponent and definitely something which can cause us problems so <clears throat> um just taking a look at your build order while we rewind and check that yeah so you are often going for the quicker baneling nest which i'm okay with yeah that's that's okay as like a safety thing we're doing yeah, that's sort of just become blind as a blind. Like, if I put it now, now I'm safe against Hellbats as long as I sort of see them. Yeah. Um, okay. This is totally fine. As long as we, we do need to focus really hard on droning in this next little while, because we've gone a, a, a fast five queens, right? Very, yeah. very good kind of queen defense build, which a lot of people, if they're skipping the Bailey Nest, will go the queens this fast. And they'll also add the sixth and seventh on very soon after, right? Which you don't need to do, because you've got that Baneling Nest, which strengthens you a little bit against the Hellbats. But it does mean you'll have, you know, uh, potentially less queens against BCs. BCs hit so late, I, I don't think it really weakens you against that. You've just got to kind of prioritize droning over those extra queens, which it seems like we're kind of doing here. Um, we do scout. We see, you know, the stims on the way. No add-on on the starport. And that should make us uh, know there's no battle cruisers or banshees, so we can be a bit chill. <clears throat> uh, we absolutely should still be building a spore in each base. Uh, if we want to be greedy, 445, 450, or 430 if we want to be nice and safe. And uh, we did skip those this game. So that's going to open up an opportunity for that Liberator to do damage as well a bit later. Even though the Liberator is very slow this game. Um, yeah, <clears throat> let's take a look. So... Oh my god, sorry. Yeah, I, I, in the past I've always been a big fan of like the heavier queens for the Banely Nest. Not both, but I, I think this is alright. Um, but yeah, no Spore Crawler. And uh, that Liberator has done us huge damage. So we've got to be building those Spores on time. 100% against any Hellion opening. Unless you know it's a really fast 3rd CC with no star port. Just as a standard build, they're going Hellions, they're going to go a Lib, or a BC, or a Banshee, almost always. So if we just build those Spores by default at 430, it's it's going to be a game changer for sure. So we should always, always, always do that. Verse Hellions. 4 minute 30, safety Spores. Uh, your overlord positioning was good, so you had a heads up on that liberator, you just didn't move to adjust to it. I think we were a little bit kind of panicked or afraid or something like that. So, <clears throat> it's taken you a while as well to finish droning up your, your three bases here. Uh, are you doing a five gas style, or do you always go all six gases? I usually go six gases, but I've been trying to only go five. Mm-hmm. So you can see we're kind of floating money. So this game is a real lack of confidence game, right? It's, um, I can, I can see the whole story here, right? From your point of view, you've been playing louder. You've been playing a lot of Terrans and, and I can exactly put myself in your shoes. You've just been hit by someone who did uh, a Hellion 
how about dropping your main, how about hit your third. Um, the game before that, it was a BC plus 10 Hellbats hitting you at the same time on your third while a BC went in the main, like that previous replay. This shit's been going game after game after game. Now you play someone who's got a much more conservative opening and because they're not committing, we're kind of just sitting there going, <clears throat> we're like staring at the Hellbats for like those two minutes. We're kind of like straining, we're tense. We're a bit uncomfortable and we're going, where's the Hellbat morph? Where's the Hellbat morph? And it never came and we go, okay. Oh, there's a Liberator in the main. And we got kind of, you know, we, we just weren't relaxed, right? We were very, we were stressed. We can we can see the stress and, and kind of the discomfort. And then we went for that link counter. And we kind of just microing this link counter about our opponent's natural. When we know they're not on the map. They've got no units there. So, um, so yeah. It's, it's something where I think trying to be more confident here even when our opponent's being more defensive is going to help you out a little bit. And I think the Spore Crawler alone should help, but I think this might have just been like, you know, the end of a bad run of games. Um, it looks a little bit like you've come off a few losses, just with the way we're kind of oversteering at those queens and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Um, one little thing here, if we look at your, your vision, sorry, I'm swapping to your vision now. We, we are lacking a little bit of vision um, out here. If you go to everyone's camera. Because you don't see that, your queens were kind of not always knowing if your opponent was just going to dart into your natural. So your queens were a little bit worried about being on the south side whenever you weren't sure. So these overlords, like the one out front your natural, should definitely be like half a screen at least to the left hand side, if not a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Like on the little pillar or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just at least at the bottom of that ramp. Uh, probably up more here. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one. Because it's that rotation between up here and here that that's kind of you don't know where they are. And like this, the top overlord is great because it sees them on the top very early, but you don't know if they're about to rotate back up there or not. And I feel like that's just a little bit of why we were a bit like, oh, they're up there, quick, get the queens over there. Whereas we would have seen them going in that direction uh, much earlier if we had that overlord a bit further out. So just a little adjustment there, I think wouldn't would would lead to this not disrupting us, right? Yeah, because here we lose a few lings, we get more distracted, etc, etc, and this this kind of piles up. Every time that we get distracted, that hurts us a little. Um, yeah, I think you do a pretty decent job of recovering here, but because we lost those lings, that does suck. Like, we don't have any safety lings right now. So we're only at 55 drones, we'd love to be non-stop droning, but we definitely need a handful of lings. Because we can't even morph banes if hell that's morph, right? Um, you always want to have at least, you know, eight or ten Zerglings hanging around in case the Hellions dive past. Um, also to morph into Banelings. <clears throat> and we were kind of really staring at those Queens. The Lib came in and did damage. And then at this point, we're just, you know, not spending our money. And we're, we're not really hitting all our injects. And uh, our macro hatch is very late and that sort of stuff. So I think we can definitely just try and play a little bit more confidently. Uh, we're getting into your flow, getting into your rhythm here. And, um, and we just needed to spend our money here, right? We could have played a pretty yeah. close game. Cool. All right, let's hop out. Let's hop out. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like some like unseen little thing here, but I'm like, no, I think it's just being comfortable even when your opponent's not hitting you and isn't coming at you from all sides and all that sort of stuff. You know, just, just being chill with all of that. So, um... You know, I'll keep the avatars closed since that has caused some crashes in the past. <laughs> Do you want to practice against a live opponent? Should we hop into a few games or? Uh, sure. That's kind of, I don't have too many replays. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we kind of just need to really focus on the, the fundamental things here. Um, there's there's two key things. Why, why should we be more confident? Because we need confidence, right? That's the main thing. After a replay like that, we're like, we just need confidence. Um, We've got a few few reasons to be confident. I'm going to talk about them in a moment. Guys, Diamond 1, Terran. Masters 3, Terran. Diamond 2, Terran. Anyone in that entire range, help us out. Hop on, play some games. Chat channel Pig or Piggy on the NA server. Please shout out in chat if you're available. All you need to do, forward slash join space pig. Hit enter. Or forward slash join space piggy. Super easy. Get in there. Help us out. Okay, so why should we feel more, more comfortable? Um... TDL, number one, BCs. You're more organized in your response. These BCs, you defend one, next one fucking kills you. There's another one in there. It's running around. Ah, everything's dying. Re 
two things with that. Number one, we're going to be more relaxed with those BCs in our base because we know to just run drones away, A move our queens towards it, and focus on defending the other side from any Hellions or anything else that's out there, right? Number two, once we see its BCs, we're going to add a second spore in our most exposed bases. So our main base, our third base, our fourth base, as soon as that gets up, immediately we need those spores in there. Nothing worse than getting a fourth, filling it with drones and having no anti-air and having a BC just get 20 drones while we're distracted elsewhere. Um, BCs aren't going to be as much of a problem. Now we've got a little bit more organization in that response. Not just that, that Liberator did big damage in that other game. It was a big part of what threw you out of your element. Same thing, like always against Talions, we're going 4 minute 30 spore crawlers. Yes, it's earlier than needed against BCs, but we don't know if it's BCs, Banshees, Liberators. 4 minute 30 spore in each base gives us that anchor to our defense, is going to help us out a lot. That's going to make you much more stable there. And once we defend that early phase, we are going to really look to control the next stage. Now, you're playing Hydra Bane, okay? You're playing Ling Hydra Bane. So, what is our. Once we, we establish ourselves, once we establish ourselves, our, our, our fourth. Defend all early pressure. So we're going to leave that one gas empty in your main base all game, right? We're going to do that five gas yep. style, okay? So just five gases. Five gases. Uh, no extra gas in main ever, okay? Even if you starve for gas, doesn't matter. Just just produce more zerglings, you know? You'll catch up. Build, build another macro hatch, okay? So that's one thing. The next one is going to be... Okay, so we've got three bases... Um, five gases. How many drones is that off the top of your head? Uh, 63. That's exactly correct. 63 drones, assuming you've got 16 <coughs> in each base. Could be a couple higher. Maybe you got 17 or 18 on some bases. Maybe one base has 15. Could be one or two less. But ideally, 63 drones. Now, that's not a huge economy, is it? Um, there's two ways two ways to do this. One is we stop there, make a shit ton of units. I don't think we need to do that. I think with the way you play, we're going to build an extra eight drone straight away. So we are going to get... Actually, we're going to go four bases, five gases. So that's eight more drones we're going to build. 71 drones. So eight drones on the fourth, okay? Yep. And what are we going to do once we have that many workers? Are we taking a fifth... Are we building a few more workers here? Are we taking one more gas? Fuck, no. Once we hit that point, non-stop Lingbane Hydra. Okay, how many Hydras? Early on, it's mostly Lingbane. Any early double medivac stem pressure, it's just Lingbane, right? Your Hydras, yep. you only really want to start building them once that second upgrade is on the way. Because until they've got Start upgrades, building them what? You cut out. Sorry, once, once their second upgrade is on the way. So you don't really want to be building Hydras with no upgrades unless you really have a specific purpose for them because unupgraded Hydras are expensive. They don't have the Bane speed. If your opponent manages to trade and kill like eight Hydras for 15 Marines, that's an amazing trade for them. Hydras are just an expensive, shitty unit. Once they get the upgrades, they become much more powerful. Non-stop Ling Bane Hydra. So how many Hydras are we going to go up to um, once we do start building Hydras? Do you go 30 Hydras, 5 Hydras, somewhere in the 12. middle? You like 12 12, 12 is my number. Okay. But sometimes hold down the H key and hope for the best. So. Okay. Um, I think I, I would have said 15, but I think 12 is not bad. Um, so we're going to go 12 Hydras at max later on. 20 Hydras. Never go beyond 20. That's, <coughs> that's already a very high count. Okay. So it's still mostly Ling Bane. <clears throat> 12 Hydras. And what we're doing is just massing Ling Bane, right? Yep. So what do we do? Spread creep, inject, spread creep, inject. What else are we doing? Fighting for the map. We're looking to, to spread, to keep our army, maybe split in two squads ready to flank. Maybe we keep it in one big ball. Whenever they push forward, we jump on it. We try to engage. Maybe we start sending some counterattacks, the speed beans into mineral lands, all that sort of stuff. But at that point, it's all about your engagements and everything, right? So we've got this clear cutoff point where we say, I've got a handful of drones on my four, that's seven or eight drones. I've got five gases. It's just non-stop Ling Bane Hydra. And we're going to run away with this game. We're going to do really fucking well with that. Um, <clears throat> Miani has hopped in to help us out. Uh, we've also had MTA World. Let's see what rank Miani is. <clears throat> Miani is 4,300. Uh, MTA World is 38. Okay. You know what? We'll start with MTA World. <clears throat> nice. 
Uh, map choice? Uh, anything except blue chef. We go Kairos. Kairos Junction. Thank you very much for the support, people in chat. Fat Text has just resubbed. Much love, Dave. Goldfish, thank you for gifting the sub to Flappy Najib, who rejoins the pigsty for the third month running. Sorry for the interruption of the stream, guys. Uh, today has been a very interrupted day, but that's all good because we're about to see some beautiful ZVT. So, Lorax, you've been killing it. Honestly, your builds have looked good. There is a crucial point in both replays we watched where things fell apart. The first game, you were looking good. We didn't add the defense for the BCs. That's fine. We're going to do that next time, um, right? It was the second wave of BCs, us not having spores or rebuilding any queens that got us. Other than that, we were playing fucking brilliantly. Um, that final game, we just froze up in general. We weren't confident. So honestly, let's just remember, we were playing against a Hellion opening. <clears throat> when do we put spores down? Uh, 4.30. Okay. <clears throat> uh, other than that, you're doing your normal build. That's all. That's it. If we see BCs, then we can we can do that BC reaction. So close your eyes. I know it sounds silly. Please actually close your eyes. What do we do after that first BC has come in? We've defended it. There could be more. We have no idea. It might just be the one BC. Maybe we've even killed it. But let's assume there's more BCs because we always imagine there's going to be a second BC. And maybe that first one will be returning. What do we add on our defense off the top of your head? Uh, I go up to two spores on the outside bases and make sure fourth has them as well Beautiful. and constant queens if they keep dumping um more bcs in until you get up to nine or so so even after that first first bc we're going to assume that they're, they're still building bcs right so you're going to build up to about nine queens just as a precaution um, no one has ever built just one bc so. <laughs> <laughs> that's my stupid way of doing it I, I think I need to go back to building more BCs it was funny because the first week everyone would build like 10 corruptors so you're like well okay you just <laughs> so then I was like yeah. I'm just going to build one BC and force 10 corruptors out sure and now no one's building corruptors and I think it's time to go back to multiple BCs so you're, you're going to build the queens as well the second spores that's going to make your life so much easier and if we lose a queen or two it doesn't matter it's not a big deal because we're, we're going to actually be able to you know establish the mining and get up to Five gases, and how many drones on our fourth base? Uh, six to eight. Beautiful. It's going to be about 70 drones total, um, because we're only on five gases. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Um, good luck. Have fun. Let's fucking go. Cool. All right. Let's do it. All right. All right. All right. Good luck. Have fun. Get in your groove. And let's smash it. All right, guys. Uh, TDL is um has got an easier match here to warm up which is good because looking at that last replay I've, I've seen games where i do the same thing when i play like she did in that last game I get, those are the games where i'm going ah i can't believe i played that so much below my normal level so that always comes from a lack of confidence at some point or decisiveness and as as she said going into this coaching session she's not confident in zbt right now she just can't seem to figure out what their builds are and she can't seem to figure out what she needs to be doing better and she's kind of stuck in this holding pattern of being like what am i meant to be doing in these scenarios and she's lost the decisiveness so i'm gonna write a little kind of list here at the top so <clears throat> the key takeaway from today and this is something she can read after we're done the session when she's watching the replays tomorrow um <clears throat> the big takeaway is we need to be more confident We've identified key things that are messing us up. Namely, air harassment. We've responded with a set spore timing to block all potential air harass. That's the four minute 30 spores. Now we should be more confident to just get that flow going. Our play has looked fantastic until we've hit a fragmentation point where <clears throat> we haven't responded to follow up waves of BCs, etc. correctly. We've stopped spending our money and focused on pointless ling run buys or other stuff 
essentially we've been hitting a point where we forget to focus on our fundamentals because of the losses in the back of our mind. By focusing on set rules for defending theses and so on, we free up our mind to focus on getting set up and spending our money, aka developing our normal play and not stressing out and uh, freezing up under pressure. <clears throat> Essentially, we can just get in our groove and play our pre-planned strategy rather than stuck in a holding pattern of not knowing how to respond to each game and that should change everything that will change absolutely everything game one kairos junction cvt versus mta world pc <clears throat> How can people be so ma masochist? Play Zerg, they come and kill your drones constantly. Your scouting feels average. I mean if you if you get your, your defense up correctly, you feel like an unstoppable unstoppable cancer to you, you know, you 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 spread across the map, you grow and, and they just can't seem to 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 burn you out and to get rid of you. She's prioritizing droning quite well here. She rallied. She didn't rally drones onto her gas yet. That's a problem. It's like four minutes since she's forgotten to put back on gas. I gotta tell her to do that. Wait, did she build? She built two more. You're doing good. Just remember to put back on gas in the main. So she's got to remember 4 minute 30 sports. So she's building 10 more lings to make sure no run buys happen. She's going up to actually 6 queens very early. <sighs> I'm not a big fan of the lair. I think the lair serves no function here, guys. A fast lair can be nice to help against um, banshees. We know that's not banshees, though. We need those safety spore crawlers. And we really need to focus on droning for the next little while. You're very safe with a nice setup of queens and lings. You just got to get those safety spores in each base and uh, finish droning that third. The setup's been really nice this game. <clears throat> oh my god, this is the Marauder one. Two Marauders. Oh god. She hasn't. She hasn't looked at the front. She hasn't been looking at it at all. Oh god. Whereas if she was paying attention, she could have pulled every queen there. She was just a little bit behind her actions, but... Oh, she has Banelings! I didn't even realize she had Banelings already finished. I thought they were just starting. Oh, because the Medivac's still up, that's causing big problems. Thankfully, that Hellbat died. Um, the Lings should be able to deal with this. She was a little bit slow. Yeah, she didn't bring the extra Queens down as quickly as she should have. Ooh, nice transfuse there. That was good. Well done, well done, well done. Oh my god, that Queen in the back still alive on four hit points. Nice. Okay. She did a real good job there. Real good job. Um, didn't check the Hellion build up. Should have glanced and realized what was up. Order Marine. Medivac all tells of Hellbat. And how should we have reacted to that, guys? Pull all queens to the front. And focus fire medevac also. Either of those changes, um, if she had the extra two queens there at the front from the start, would have meant she took a lot less damage. As it is, though, she's doing a good job. Where the fuck is the fourth and the macro hatch, though? That's a big question. She's got, oh, no, she got the macro hatch. No fourth, though. There we go. She did it. I was about to pipe in and go, whoa, what's happening? Where is it? But she did it. Good, good, good. She's killing it. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, her gas count's a little bit lower than normal this game. Um, especially she hasn't put on that extra gas on her nat, so... I really hope she realizes about that gas real soon, otherwise I will tell her to do it. On your natural, there is a gas that's not mining. But yeah, otherwise you're doing a real good job here. So you just need a couple more drones for that uh, fourth base, and then from there it's just non-stop Ling Bane Hydra. So remember to get the Hydra upgrades going nice and early, as well as the Bane speed. But for the most part, it's just Ling Bane for a while. The Hydras can come in a bit later down the track. So her Hydra tech is going to be a little late, but it's really not as important as just having enough Ling Bane to, to hammer home against these sort of attacks. And she, yeah, she spots this coming and she goes, oh my god, what the fuck is this? And uh, she's just going to wait for those Bane links to finish and then she'll be fine. The queens should have already come in here. She's a little bit slow on that, but there we go. Ah, uh, where are the queens? The queens didn't didn't aim her. And she's made way too many bands there. That was way too many bands. Okay. Eight minutes. Uh, good to make bands versus a hell that marine pressure. But fifteen was more than enough. We made like thirty. Also needed to attack with the queens to start the fight. Could focus medevac slash uh, bait them into the engage and then go in with Lindbane for a more clean engagement. Bane speed, and as long as you keep producing massling Bane from here, your opponent has no business being on your side of the map. So you should be respreading your creep on the south as much as you can, and simply pushing them back to their side of the map, going out there and looking for an engagement uh, wherever you can find it. You can't be afraid, guys. You can't just sit back and let them clear creep. She has the bigger army, she has the better army. Obviously it's a bit of an awkward scenario going off creep, but... You've got to get out there. You can't just sit back and let them hammer your creep home for free. Like right now, she's still way too afraid. Yeah, not having Baneling speed is obviously kind of terrible. Oh, big big mistake from MTA. MTA forgot combat shields, by the way. But she she should just be overwhelming in here. Notice she's not A-moving this. Since she hasn't seen Widow Mines, she needs to adjust and just kind of get him off the map right now. Where is her creep queen, Hockey? She's got two queens, Hockey. They need to be respreading creep there. That should be the urgency, right? Let's see if she finds that in the midst of the chaos. Stop injecting and do that. She's queued up 10 hydras. Yeah, this is the right time to do it. They're going to have double upgrades soon. Bane speed's almost here, as are the hydras. She's gone to respread creep just as the next wave's come. And uh, those units should actually be there, because that's not really a flank if they come from... Oh, she set it up! She set it up! Alright, time to A-move. Come on. Come on. A-move it. She's giving way too much respect to this army. Way too much respect to this army. The Terrans should never be allowed to siege up this close to a base, unless they're like really really doing something special to achieve that oh that's cool this hydra's gonna get blasted oh good micro good micro oh and mules just dropped there <laughs> speeding is trying to click in nice gg well played all right all right good game there to kind of warm into that Deep breath after the hectic nature of Terran vs. Zerg. Top of your head. What are the one or two biggest things which you uh, could fix in that game to get better results? Forgot to put down spores and get Bane speed. Yep, so the spores were a little bit late. Um, 
Yeah, because we forgot to put on that back on gas quite as early as normal in the main, and then we forgot to put on that gas in our natural for a while. That did slow down your gas count a little. Bane speed was, was, was very big for sure. Um, we still had the numbers though, and this is something where it's, it's weird and it won't always be the case, but we never want to let them just push onto the edge of creep like that, right? A lot of Terrans will just try to do that, and you've got to make sure they earn that, right? And I think here, with this real focus on having a nice, clean, economic early game, our default should be, oh, they're pushing across? Like, engage them just as they're getting near the edge of creep. Don't don't let them set up and respray and, and kind of deny our creep. And, and don't let ourselves get pushed back into that I'm afraid to take an engagement because that will allow them to take good engagements. If the moment we're afraid and we let them set up that early in the game, it's a problem, right? Um, later on, when they're maxed out, you can't, if they're using their army correctly and they've got a much bigger army and they've got more upgrades and lots of widow mines and stuff, it's harder to go out and just A move them off creep, right? Because it's, it's not going to be a good engagement generally for you. But in these early stages, the first few medevacs and marines coming over, we've got to be a little bit more decisive at dealing with that. Now, that first hellbat attack you did quite well against, even though you were a bit surprised by it. But the second hellbat attack, we made like... 30 banelings or something crazy against it and it was only four hellbats and a bunch of marines did you think there were more hellbats in that army or do you think it was just a panic because it was definitely a few too many banelings that you made in that second engage yeah i expected it to be a, a higher level of units with the push um yeah it was, it was... i wasn't i didn't make a, a conscious decision about how many banes to make i was just like fuck me <laughs> yeah because it was one of those fights which could have been so much more efficient if we just had another 20 lings <laughs> instead of 20 of those banelings to you know just kill the units for free right because banelings never trade well on their own right unless your opponent's I like 10 banelings was to. the proper counter to marauders <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially when they're they're spread out individually just like 10 yeah. banelings into each marauder as long as you've got 130 drone economy, you know, Banelings are the most supply efficient units, so go for it. It, it works out. I heard that, yeah. <laughs> uh, MTA world is is lagging us. Going to remove from party. We're going to throw Miani in anyway for this next one. Wait, what are they? Is the map even clicked on? It is. Cool. Uh, so we're going to try one more game here to round out today's <coughs> session, which should be nice. Um... Bane speed and, and yeah, don't don't let them set up on the edge of creep. That's really it. I think you you did a bit better that game. Um just in general. So things looked a little bit more decisive, right? And and you did have those numbers, but um Yeah, I don't think I'm trying to think if there was any big huge miss honestly baneling speed was just massive, right? That that really slowed us down. But otherwise, good 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 job just kind of exploding into Ling Bane, Hyd Ling Bane production for a long time. You added the Hydras at the correct time as, as the double upgrades were nearing completion when they actually become a very useful unit. Um, don't get me wrong, sometimes if you happen to have a few Hydras mixed in earlier, it can be helpful, but it's it's never it's always like the, oh, well, this will be cool because then I can maybe kill the Medivacs while crushing a fight. It's never like, oh, having three Hydras instead of a bunch of Ling Bane was actually a better choice for, like, surviving. No, no, no. The Ling Bane's always better for keeping you alive, right? And actually winning a fight. Hydras are just what makes a fight even more decisive. So I think that was really good, delaying the Hydras. You massed a little Ling Bane. Uh, let's just go through it again. I think your build order's pretty good, and uh, it should be nice. All right, just checking Miani's good. Uh, Miani should be... Yep. All right, let's go. Good luck. Have fun. Let's kill it. So um, if you all in chat want to play a bit more of a defense or aggressive style, you absolutely can uh, learn something with like a Roach Ravager push, put the momentum in your hands and, and put the pressure on the Terran to defend correctly, right? Um, TDL is playing more of like a, a defensive style where she wants to explode only in the in the later portion of the mid game and then go mm, now I'm the overwhelming Zerg you know so this is, it makes things hard for us but if we do it correctly it, it definitely is is nice it gives us some uh, some cool shit um, Zebio thanks to the Twitch Prime sub welcome to Pigsty my friend Fire 08 Pyro with the Twitch Prime sub as well much love mate. Uh, Pastry SC threw us a four viewer host. Thank you so much, Pastry SC. Much love. Hope you had a great stream. 
I uh, hope we got a shout out for pastry in chat. Sorry, I know that was like 10, 12 minutes ago. Just very focused on my coaching session. Last game of the coaching session after this, I will be hopping into some uh, some pretty team games and that sort of stuff. It should be fun. Melody of War said, I just got three pigs in RimWorld. One male, two females. Guess what I named the male one? My man. What's up, Melody of War? Dude, pigs are the best. You know when you're like, you've got your person who's like a sick fucking scientist or some shit. They're like researching all day. And then you're like, wait, I need to use them to haul rocks. Get rid of that problem. You got a bunch of pigs. You train them how to haul shit. They'll be like grabbing ore for people, going and grabbing wood, bringing berries back to the camp. Pigs are the best. Best pet to have trained up in your settlement. Um, Yeah, it's good shit. It's good shit. I'm looking fuzzy. Green, green screen needs a tune. Ah, it does too many times. Summer, summer woes, guys. Summer woes. Um, there we go. What can I say? I like my fresh air and my sunlight. And I sacrifice a little bit of production for it. Fire, Pyro, and Zebio. Thank you, thank you for those subs. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> is it the Notorious PIG? You know it is. Yeah. Thanks, Captain Speaking. What up, no money? Ish, when do you get the natural and third base gas with this build? Uh, once you're fully saturated on minerals. So 16 on the natural, 16 on the third. So the, it, 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 this is a rule of one gas. This is a variation. Normally I don't teach this build with the baneling nest and I teach it with a bit more continual queen production. But uh, this is just a, a variation of the classic rule of one gas. Uh, it still follows the fundamental rule of don't take gas past your first one until you've got three full mineral lines. So you get a big explosion of mineral income, then you explode into your gas a little bit later in the game. And that single gas will still give you enough to get any defensive um, banelings if you if you back on it early enough, but most importantly, get your double upgrades started at a good time and all that sort of stuff. When do you normally put drones back on gas in the main? Three minutes 30, roughly, Adzi, is when you do that. Struggling with naming the two lady big pigs, hit me up with some names. Uh, bacon and pastrami. I don't even know what pastrami is. That's like a pork product, right? It's like an American name. I don't think we have stuff called pastrami. I think we call it something else. Um, ooh, ooh. Pastrami is beef. It's from brisket. Yeah, we don't have that. <laughs> We probably do, it's just not very popular, or I didn't grow up eating it. Um, prosciutto. Prosciutto, then. Bacon and prosciutto, yeah. Kind of cool, but you like it. Nothing wrong with a little bit of cannibalism. Fourth queen's nice and early. This base is saturated slightly later than I would have liked this game around. She's been a little bit slower on those dronings. Her, her injects got a bit desynced here. So I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that. Yeah, the desync, which is going to be awkward. So I hope she, she fixes that up a little bit later. Why has she got spores at four minutes? So cancel those spores. They're not meant to go down until 4.30. Just stick to the build. You're doing really good. And yeah, just keep uh, keep it rolling. See you guys, you put a spore down now, 4.30. She'll be ready in time for that banshee. Let's remember those spores, doing real good. Ooh, she noticed that got blocked, good, good, good. That's the worst thing when your spore gets blocked and the drone's like, nope, nope I'm gonna stop trying to do that. And you're like, fucking hell, man. So this is a much higher level opponent, Miani. Not much, but like a couple hundred MMR, which is a big difference. A couple hundred MMR makes a big difference in StarCraft. And then the Baneling Nest, says Adzi. Uh, yeah, for the way Lorax is doing this version of the build, yeah. You're glad you're not pregnant, otherwise your girl would be named Corned Beef.
she's why 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 her queen's not coming back over here? She's only got four zerglings, that's why she's being greedy. Okay. It's the sort of greed I can kinda of get behind. Since her early game was a little bit unconfident with like just like building the spores at the wrong time and that sort of stuff. I really want to see her just kind of get these gases up and, and just kind of get everything organized, you know? Uh, like put three on that gas, and then she's got to change her rally points back to this base. For the main, even. Yeah, she's trying to reorganize right now. Trying to get back on track. Still no fourth base down. Could be problematic. It is going to be bio. Um, Stim isn't started, so that's good for her. I don't know if Miani realizes that Stim was forgotten. I don't want her to win just because there's no stim. Remember, whenever you start that hydrant in, you go Bane Speed at the same time. Really important to always link those. Bane Speed's actually the more important of the two. But always link those two up, and that way you'll never forget. Game two. I just double check. Alright, so 3 minute 50 spores. Way too early. Um, forgot to build the handful of lings. Help stop alien run bys. 4 minutes up to 12 lings is a good benchmark. Perhaps add this to your build. You often forget it. Need to remember to link up Bane Speed and Hydroden. Joint. Sorry for the joint activities. I don't know why she's building an infestation. Not the most important, but it'll do. Love to see a spore up here, by the way. So she's lacking a little bit of map vision. She did see a move out. She's got to be out there ready to engage it. So I'm just going to see how she handles this. You see this push? You should just be like, Ooh, move half the army down, set up the flank, collapse from two sides. Right now, these units are essentially the same as these ones. They're just staggered behind it. That is not a flank for this map. She's queued it though. She said A move around to the rear. Beautiful setup. I'm so happy. I'm very, very happy with that. Yep. Happens to catch a drop at the same time. She's already got Ling Bane in the main for it. Keep building units. If she can keep injecting and building units, that's going to be important. But she's setting up a very fancy flank. And, ooh, she's going to do it. F2A move. That's the way to do it. I'm so fucking proud right now, guys. Boss around. I'm so fucking proud of Lor Lorax right now. You'll see her in chat after this coaching session. Give her props for setting up that surround. That was some serial shit. That's an icy fire replay for next week. Yeah. That's that's the shit you guys need to send me in games of you setting up surrounds like that. If you guys who don't know, there's a new icy fire topic that's been announced. Encirclement. It's going to be beautiful. Beautiful. So she's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, she's trying to remember her order. Like, okay, take a pre deep breath, spread creep. You know, take a deep breath, spread creep. Get a fifth, get a hive, etc., etc. 
These overlords accidentally moved out, so she's going to spread them. And, uh, yeah. One thing is she didn't set up lings, so this fourth base got up for free. Whereas that could have been denied somewhat easily. So, yeah. If I were her, I'd be out there, like, trying to scare that army a little bit earlier. So, this is one thing where... After the first convincing fight, I wouldn't have minded you just headbutting the next army slash camping in the middle of the map. When ahead slash when we are on top of macro, I feel we should be forcing siege ups, burrows, and generally not letting them move on to creep quite as much. So at 11 minutes, could have probably jumped on that in the middle of the map. No reason to let our opponent deny creep. So this is not a great counterattack because she's spread, but the opponent's also not prepared for it. And she is going to finally get on top of that. Lair, the hive is in the natural. She's cleared that up at the same time. She did okay there. She's pulling those units back, which is good. It would have been nice to get those workers. But yeah. So you did take some worker losses. It's important to, yeah, if you want to play a longer game, keep your army out in the middle of the map. So you've got a way bigger army, and once again, we're falling to the trap of letting our opponent clear creep. Our opponent has no business being on the map for several minutes, right? We've been smashing the army so hard. So you don't need to, you know, counterattack, but you just need to, if they move out, you jump on that army and force them to siege up at the very least. And use this. There should be no pressure on us at all. Just spread creep. Um, and if you want, you can build another 10 drones here. Of course, replacing the drones in your main is important. And, uh, and you know, getting up into that, that next tech is beautiful. So, you know you're against bio tank. So, vipers is usually a very nice unit. If you're not comfortable with them, you can just play ultras and broods. That's totally fine. Um, but if you are a spellcaster player, definitely go for the vipers. But the main thing here is, yeah, definitely keep, like, getting link scouts everywhere, respreading your creep as much as you can, you know, using the creep hotkey and all that sort of stuff. And um, just making sure your opponent doesn't get expansions for free. And, you know, as long as you've got a scary army, be willing to say, hey, you can't just march all the way across the map. I'm ready to jump on you if you try to do that. So that's good. I, I, she, she's in a good spot. So, I, I, like, look at this army. That's, like, the most pathetic army you've ever seen. It's not even the whole army. Like, there should be no reason Miani's allowed to be out here, right? Um, and this is the sort of problem sometimes Zergs do fall into that, that issue. So, she's set up, she hasn't stolen those units onto a different key, and that's a problem. That's a real problem for her. She has set up a nice little flank there, and, um, yeah, the Marines are going to evacuate, but, like, she didn't even need to set up a surround, right? That's, that's kind of a waste of APM. It's kind of like, wait, why did we bother setting up a surround? We didn't need to do that. You're doing really good, but you need to steal that squad in the main base onto a separate key. So take a deep breath, set up that defense key, leave them there for the rest of the game, and you should be good. So there's no need for her to attack right now, but this is this is good. You know, it's like a, it's like a poke, deny an expansion if there happens to be one out there. See what you can do. Miani here is just what the fuck, just playing suicidal. It's not respecting the threat of a crazy zerg. Um, she's going in with only some of her units. She didn't get the command center either, which is a bit unfortunate for her. I'd love to see her just smash this base. She's almost giving him a little bit too much respect. Um, where, like, he has no business being out of the map right now. Once again, even though his army is very scary, not, not while he's seen that she's on his side, but she was the one who actually kind of blinked there and pulled back, and you'll notice she has a lot of money but uh, her Zerglings didn't get on top of the tanks there. Yeah, more Zerglings and Ultras on the way. And this was just before 3-3 finished for both sides. Uh, if she can manage to get rid of those tanks and keep that base alive, she's good. But, I mean, just one stim of Marines in that mineral line. And, and her economy is just probably too far behind. Get on top of it. This one drilly boy up there is trying to kill the three armor drones. Not going to happen. Always remember to replace your hydras in this scenario. 
You're doing good. That gold base is where she should have expanded, not here. So learning to recognize when she's ahead and just A-moving move-outs from Terran is something she's got to work on. She's got to give the Terrans less respect. Um, she's over-respecting their move-outs. She didn't steal that Ultron to a defense key, so she's really going to struggle with it again. Need to remember to set up defense squad and control group them. We got caught in patterns a few times where we pulled uh, our defense away and a single drop or two did way too much damage. <coughs> the previous, so the previous two points are what drained our APM and so we stopped spreading creep. The longer the game went, the more that hurt us. As we never got the huge advantage that confers to this ground pounding Ling Bane Hydra Ultra Army. This army is still very measly. If she can just set up a flank and crush that, she'll be good. She still has two queens, but she seems to just not use these for um, defense later on in the game, which is an interesting, interesting thing. I want her to figure it out for herself, and I think she will do it. I think she'll get there. I'm not going to say anything. Catalan, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the pigsty, dude. So a lot of the units were not in the correct angle. Um, these Banelings on the flank finally coming in. Yeah, it wasn't a perfect surround by any means. She's taking a way worse trade than she needed to here. Um, even losing Ultras. And, and she could have crushed that army a lot earlier, but it's enough. It should be enough to finally, finally, you know, finish this game. And, and once again, you know, we see Miani here moving out into the middle of the map, and he's actually going to GG. I don't think she realized how far ahead she was even there. It's a good game, though. Woo! Sorry, Serral, I've got nothing left to teach you. That first surround on that army. Ooh! Chat exploded for that one. That was awesome. Well done. GG well played. Is it bad that at the end of the game I thought I was really far behind? I just said that. I just said that. I said, oh, Meoni's going to GG. He's not completely dead, but he's definitely behind. And I was like, I bet she's... I bet she's TDL doesn't doesn't realize that she's about to win there. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure from your vision, because I was watching a lot on your camera, and, and you couldn't tell, but the bases were mined out. There weren't that many units. That last fight wasn't quite as efficient as it could have been because a lot of the banelings took a long time to get on the marines and your hydras weren't on the flank so they couldn't get on the libs for a long time so they got more shots despite that you were still up 40 supply after that fight you you still had a good economy um you had great upgrades well played well 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 played awesome 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 so i wrote down a shit ton of notes um what was interesting is you were so in control and ahead after your first big surrounding engagement but the lack of confidence from the last few weeks of getting hammered in this matchup is what uh, undercut you a little bit. There was a few key things that happened. The main ones were you kept letting your opponent move out, same as in the previous match, and just set up on the edge of creep. And I was like, wait, you just fucking destroyed an army with a huge amount of your army surplus left over, and you're letting your opponent come across the map and set up, and you were setting up another surround. And I was like, oh, no, 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 you're ahead. Don't let your opponent set up on the edge of creep and clear creep. Because what does that do? That, that's putting yourself on the back foot. That's something you do to crush one big, powerful, decisive attack that you know you've got to respect, right? 
But if you crush that fight as well as you did that first one, if you can imagine there's two, there's two power-up bars, right? And you both start half full. That's your position in the game. You've, you're both power-up bars are 50%. You win that fight, you're 70%, they're 30%. That's your position in the game, right? Overall, generally speaking, right? You don't want to keep respecting their army at that point. You want to say, how do I build an advantage from here? I just keep my army in the middle of the map. If I see them move out, I just A, move onto it. What am I What am I using this map control for? I'm spreading creep like a, like a crazy person. I'm just creep, 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 creep. The other thing which drained your APM besides that one, where you were letting your opponent deny a creep, and even though you were taking good engagements, they were often picking up, saving a lot of the units and boosting away. So it's like, you know, you're not you're not really trapping their army, right? But you're, you're giving them too much time and you're letting them waste too much of your APM. The other one was the drops in the main, where a few times, I don't know if it was an F2, or just um, we forgot to se separate the control group or what, where we pulled units away from the main a few times and those drops started getting repeat damage. Um, whereas your initial setup, defending the main while setting up your giant surround was perfect. Um, it was awesome. But after that point, we needed to leave those units in the main because we were spending too much APM trying to constantly send units back to the main, taking damage there, losing drones, having to pull them away, putting them back and setting up unnecessary surrounds, which you, you did many times throughout that game where you had a way bigger army. Your opponent wasn't sieged or anything. You could have just A moved it and you were kind of setting up a fancy surround in the later stages. If you cut the APM out of those two actions, you've just got a squad sitting in the main. It just defends. You barely need to do anything. And you're just, like I said, holding the middle of the map because you're in a good position. You've got way more APM to spread creep, to get those bases up sooner, and just to feel more in control of the match as opposed to we were letting the Terran put us on the defensive. Um, does that all make sense? Yeah, so if you're playing, so say you are ahead and then you move out in the middle of the map to prevent them from moving out. Yeah. At that point, I still don't feel like I can actually like attack <coughs> into a Terran player. Am I just waiting for hive tech before I like actually start trying to take bits and pieces of them down? Yeah, I, w I would I would say so. I mean, if the thing is, look, if they extend, overextend, then you can counter attack. And you did that once or twice in that game. You rolled in and did big eco damage and um, and almost even broke uh, Miani once or twice so it's 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 just being what is the advantage you're, you're establishing it's the creep spread and it's putting links on all the expansions we let Miani get a fourth turn it into a planetary well before we even spotted it right whereas if we had a ling there and then we realized that was happening it would have given us more incentive to come in with like a ling counter and stop that morphing or something like that or you know anything to oh there's a base that's out in the open our opponents when a terran goes to four bases suddenly one of those bases is usually far away from the army you can run in with your lingbane hydra kill the, the planetary or the command center and run away right without really committing into their their units that are sieged up a ramp in a spread um even when you've got hive tech you don't want to take those engagements unless you've got like brood lords or something you know um it's just about oh you're gonna you're, they're gonna starve out right they can't really get to a fourth you're getting more and more creep and you're eventually getting up to for you maybe it could be brood lords every game maybe it's just ultra lingbane hydra and just play a defenses a defensive game the thing is i don't think we i think you, you'll notice that it's less stressful i think at the moment you're like the reason sitting defensively and not being able to just outright win the game with one fell swoop that's stressing you out a little bit because you're spending so much apm setting up perfect surrounds for things that don't deserve it and you're draining your APM with the drop defense as well, like I mentioned. So if you clean those two up, I think once you're ahead against Terran, it's going to feel like really good because you're just kind of like, okay, spread creep. That's cool. Spread creep. Let's go. Oh, you're going to come fight me? Okay. You come out of your base. That's where I can take these good engagements. You're going to come on creep. That's where I can take amazing engagements. And every second that you're ahead and you get to the, get that creep out to the three quarter mark or anything like that, I like to think of it as a win condition. Your win condition is if your creep gets out to the edge of one of their expansions, you've won the game. Because every Terran, when that happens, feels their heart sink and they go, fuck this. There's no, like, because they know from experience when a Zerg has that much creep, there's very little they can do. They're just like, oh man, like, I can't even get in range of a base to do damage. As soon as I move out, I'm going to have Banelings rolling into my stuff. How the hell am I possibly going to have enough scans to even clear all this? They know it's like the problem is so big. So if you can think of that as a win condition, I'm in control of the map, spread creep to their doorstep. That's going to be a much better way of just establishing yourself in the game and really uh, just having that meaty army out in the middle of the map, scaring the shit out of them. Cool. Awesome. Um, amazing play. Early game was much better that game. Uh, lots of notes. Watch the replays. 
read through the notes. We've gone over time, so let's quick, uh, quickly finish up. Hit me up when you've got another, you know, another problem or anything like that. But I think you're going to be so much better now just because the spores should help you. You're going to be more confident. I wrote a little essay about what was going wrong um, early on in our session at the top of your document about, you know, basically you were hitting a fragmentation point where you were falling apart despite everything being super clean up to a point. I think the spores, I think the knowledge of how to defend the BCs is going to help you with that. And I think now you should just be able to have more decisiveness getting into your rhythm. I think that last game is perfect because we also got to look at the later stages and where your confidence kind of fragments there as well. So we've kind of got this two, two parts. We figured out you should be more confident at the start and in the late game with the new knowledge you've got. So I'm hoping your practice uh, treats you well. It's going to take a few games to get all this obviously comfortable, but good luck. Have fun in the practice. And um, I look forward to seeing you having that mechanical rhythm, even in the late game, where those queens keep respreading creep where, it's, where it gets cleared and the, that those creep tumors are just slowly crawling across the map because that's going to checkmate your opponents. It should be really, really good. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Keep saving replays. Keep writing down questions, problems. Good luck. Have fun in your practice. And uh, Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. All right. Laters. Later. Later. She fucking killed it. That was actually, um, yeah, that was good.